Wild weather is lashing South Australia, creating so much chaos, emergency services say they can't keep up. There were more than a thousand calls for help overnight and authorities warn it's not over yet. Tim Morgan explains. Homes crushed, cars destroyed and power lines left dangling. As South Australia's latest storm brought hundreds of trees crashing down like dominoes. Their tree fell down and then that fell down on a tree across the road from us and then that knocked on the tree in our place and obviously brought the power lines down. Winds of up to 120 kilometres an hour didn't just overpower trees, it blew away roofs. The top of Glenelg Stadium's main grandstand needed heavy machinery to stop it flying away any further. Well, yesterday there was maybe 100 people sitting in that grandstand and if that wind had come then, uh, you do wonder what would have happened. The rain no less forgiving. Emergency services rushed to rescue three teenagers caught out by rising waters while playing in a storm water drain. So a lot of resources taken up with what is a really silly act at this time of year. In total, the SES received 1,300 calls overnight as roads turned to rivers. We could probably like wakeboard off that wave. Flash flooding inundating businesses, waist deep water reducing backyards to mud. We, we don't own a swimming pool and we had one last night so... Um, it's, that's the best way I can describe it. Power cut to more than 100,000 homes and businesses. Some won't be restored until tomorrow. While patients were evacuated from the Calvary Rehabilitation Hospital at Walkerville as the state endured another widespread blackout. No power system in the world will withstand a gum tree hitting a power line and dragging it to the ground. The danger isn't over just yet. Sandbag stations were set up across the state this afternoon with more wild weather predicted for later today and into the evening. We're not out of the woods in uh, further south. Uh, there is the potential for thunderstorms to break out. Tim Morgan, 10 Eyewitness News. Good evening. It could take months to repair all the damage caused by our freak summer storm. Heavy rain and gale force winds have left a trail of destruction across the state and tens of thousands of people are still without power. It hit at around midnight and didn't let up for more than five hours. Driving rain flooded streets and major arterial roads right across the city. Fallen trees created the biggest headache for emergency services. Under the heavy downpour, large trunks gave way with homes and cars in their path. Daylight revealed the full force of Mother Nature's fury. At Enfield, three cars and a carport were flattened. To see one of the pride and joys go, we've only had the car for a couple of weeks. The Glenelg Football Club, which is already suffering financially, lost most of the roof off a grandstand as winds across the state reached 120 kilometres an hour. It's going to slow down the vents enormously in the oval because we're not sure what's going to happen with the building. We're not sure how safe it is. And it's fortunate no one was inside this car parked nearby. At Marion, a family of five awoke to the sound of a large tree crashing onto their home. Crashed into our daughter's bedroom, yeah, so that was, that was the most terrifying. She was screaming, you just don't know what to see. They only finished renovating six months ago. It was like a cyclone. I've never experienced anything like it. Just the thud. You just feel the whole ground shake. Um, it's quite intense. Homes at Enfield copped a battering. The water raged from one street to another, smashing through a brick fence and roller door. The clean-up's likely to take days. There was literally a river outside my, my house last night. At the Trinity Gardens Bowling Club, the green looked more like a lake. And a blackout at this Marion pharmacy proved very costly. We can't access our stock though because our robot is power operated. We've had to throw away all of our vaccines. Um, so upwards $20,000 worth of stock we're having to destroy and do an insurance claim with. Widespread outages forced the closure of many businesses at one of the busiest times of the year. We've got no power so we <laughs> it's another, another day that um, you know, business is affected which has already happened a few times this year, so it's not good for small business. The State Emergency Service says it's been the busiest year on record, attending more than twice the usual number of calls. Over 1,000 calls have been responded to in the last 24 hours, and we still continue to have probably 200 jobs outstanding, and our uh, calls for assistance are still coming in. And Deanna joins us now live with an update on the blackout situation. Dee, what's the latest? 
Well, Mark, at its peak, there are 125,000 homes and businesses without power, and there are still 90,000 customers in the dark, and they're likely to remain that way well into tomorrow, and some of them even into Friday. All local crews are working on the road and will be working around the clock to do whatever they can. But they say there's been widespread damage to the distribution network. So bad they've called for help from across the border even. With 350 power lines affected across the state, they're recommending customers make alternative arrangements because they still can't say exactly when full service will be restored. So it sounds like it's going to be a long, dark night for a lot of people. Mark? Certainly does. Thanks, Deanna. A 14-year-old boy has told how he helped save his brother and cousin as they were washed down a storm drain in the western suburbs. A swift water rescue team had to pull the trio to safety. It's an adventure these young boys will never forget. Around 8.30 last night, they found themselves in trouble while playing in the Sturt River when a wall of water suddenly came out of nowhere. You know, like when a big wave just crashes and... Uh... The furry stuff just comes and just knocks you over your ears like that. Fighting the flow, the trio feared for their lives. This is a serious problem here. Yeah. We're going to get dragged along and probably never come back. Jarman told his younger brother and cousin to forget about their bike and scooter. I was hanging on to the stairs, yeah. Okay. And my cousin was holding on to my legs and my legs was getting weak, so I told him to climb over me. Very brave. He helped save cousin. Them two both got dragged down. Sonny was lucky to hold on to something on the side. So I didn't get pushed. Yeah, so I was in like a safe little place. Jarman yelled to a man nearby to call police. Alerted by a passerby that they couldn't actually get out of the stormwater drain and that uh, started a fairly major rescue as far as resources go. Star Group and SES officers used a ladder to reach the boys who say they've learnt their lesson. Never gone back there again. They lost a scooter and bike. Um, yeah, but I'm glad it was a scooter and bike instead of them. It could have been very fatal. Very proud of Jarman and thankful for the um, emergency help. Peter Caldicott, 7 News. Amelia Mulcahy joins us now. Amelia, just how powerful was this storm? Mark, this system smashed some significant rainfall records and led to concern for flooding in the Bremer and Onkaparinga rivers. Adelaide recorded 61 millimetres of rain overnight, more than forecast, more than double the monthly average, and it now takes the city's rainfall total for the year to 817 millimetres, making 2016 our second wettest year on record. The most rain fell over the Mount Lofty Ranges. Uradla collected a whopping 110 millimetres. North of Adelaide, snow Town recorded 80 and gauges at Edinburgh, Two Wells and Golden Grove all recorded 70. This strong system began across the northern border and late yesterday hit Andamooka with 68 millimetres. It packed fierce winds too, a gust at Mount Crawford, the strength you'd usually feel in a cyclone. Even the brewery lights here weren't spared. It closed early after parts washed away down the torrents. Tonight showers are likely to develop and a thunderstorm's possible too. I'll have more on what's ahead later. Mark? Good evening. South Australia has been lashed by yet another savage storm, causing widespread damage across the hills and suburbs. As we go to air tonight, 90,000 homes and businesses remain without power after winds of up to 120 kilometres an hour and 110 millimetres of rain. And there are concerns around dangerous thunderstorms tonight. Brendan Smith begins our coverage. When the savage storm struck, it was every bit as dangerous as authorities had predicted. Damage inflicted by wild winds and flooding rain. Most dangerous were trees felled by gusts as high as 120 kilometres an hour. This giant crushed a new baby's nursery built at the back of a couple's Bridgewater home. Lucky we haven't had our child yet. Uh, we're due in April and um, yeah, it would have uh, not ended well if, if she was in there. Other Hills homes damaged too. The occupant of this camper van at Milo wasn't hurt, but calmed his nerves with some billy tea. At the bay, the sheer force of the wind ripped the roof off a Glenelg Oval grandstand, a snapped timber beam spearing through the side of a parked car. Passing council workers parking an excavator on top of the iron sheets so they couldn't take off again. He drove past and just saw the roof pushing on the, on the light pole. So stopped and closed the lane and now the boys are doing whatever they can do. 
A stand that had stood the test of time for almost a century. No match for Mother Nature this time around. Pretty devastating when you look at um, the damage that's been caused. And as it swept across the state, the rain brought pain too. Water surged over Adelaide roads, trapping motorists while sunken car parks lived up to their name. The Handorf Hotel was engulfed by a rising early morning tide. The same hotel was storm damaged only three months ago. Not again was pretty much what we all thought at uh, three o'clock this morning. It was not again after what we had a couple of months ago. So yeah, just roll our sleeves up and get into it. In the city, a South Terrace Medical Centre was badly flooded, water rising in the car park, then streaming through a pharmacy where staff were forced to again clean up. It's the fourth time bad weather has seen Parkland's flooding head their way, something they want the council to finally fix. It's just getting a bit beyond a joke. So we, we're out of action for about a week by the time this happens, which means patients suffer. This is a treatment facility. Homes too were inundated, like this one at Enfield, its owner sharing the sorry sight on social media. This is how drenched it is. Inside, that's just come in through the walls. We had to bucket and towel and just uh, wring it out and drain it and take the buckets out uh, individually. South Australians hit by this extreme weather event have already begun lodging claims with insurers. Those companies still battling to clear claims and repair damage from the September superstorm and November hailstorm. Brendan Smith, Nine News. Emergency services are being praised for saving three Adelaide boys who were nearly swept away during the torrential downpour. The trio were playing in a swollen river when the floodwaters almost claimed their lives. Seconds from disaster, a terrified boy climbs to safety, his rescuer behind him. Sonny and Jarman Malera and their cousin had been playing in the Sturt River at Morfordville around 8 last night when floodwaters started to surge. A little wave came, then we got pushed by it, then a bigger wave came. Then we just got pulled by it. We just sort of got dragged down. The boys, aged 12 to 14, were swept about 100 metres downstream. I grabbed the stairs, he missed it. I just grabbed his hand, he slipped. I grabbed him, I told him to grab my foot, so he grabbed my foot. The trio tried to pull their bike and scooter from the water, but they were washed away. I felt the water getting stronger, so I was like, no, I leave the scooter and the bike, just grab something and hold on. What were you thinking about? I'm going to die. A man walking along Oakland's road heard their cries for help and called triple zero. If he wasn't walking at Dubai at the same time, then don't know what could happen. Multiple police, MFS and ambulance crews joining forces to save the trio. Paramedics treated them at the scene, the boys only suffering a few scratches. I was glad that, um, you know, it was a scooter and bike instead of the boys. I reckon they would have would have been fatal. Authorities are warning people to be extra cautious around creeks and rivers as waterways like the Sturt River could rise even further over the next few days. Please, please, just stay out of the floodwaters. Be aware of your surrounds and uh, you know, keep your kids out of the floodwaters. Paris Martin, Nine News. The storm took its toll on South Australia's power supply with 125,000 homes and businesses blacked out. Jared Brevy joins us now with more. And Jared, how many of those customers are still without power? Well, we're told there's around 90,000 customers still without power right now. SA Power Network says this situation is proving more difficult to fix than first thought. 50 to 60,000 customers around Adelaide suburbs particularly will be without power well until tomorrow, while here in the Adelaide Hills and in some country areas, a number of customers are expected to be without power well into Friday. But these blackouts are proving devastating for many already. In the early hours of the morning, the state's electricity network buckled again. And by first light, still no lights. Chaos for motorists and pedestrians at major intersections. In the eastern suburbs, darkness inside shopping centres. Coles workers held stock into bins. Produce also being dumped at this family-owned fruit shop at Maylands. A whole heap of ways, to be honest. You know, like, whole morning's work doesn't change, but... All goes straight in the bin now. Small business owners across the city angered as they counted the cost. Normally, we usually close over these three days, but you know, this year we need a bit of money because we're doing a bit of renos and that. And so we come in today. Many just shut up shop. The FPOS is dead, um, the lights are dead, everything's dead. 
and no customers. Well, we've had some people come in for a haircut and we've had to turn them away. Frustration too in households. My husband's not well and uh, so it's been a bit difficult and we've only got gas. Some families making the most out of Christmas presents. We haven't had any power since about seven this morning and so we've just been playing Lego. It is really frustrating. Um, you know, we were assured that we weren't going to have any more. First, they were told power would be restored by 11am. Later, it was 8pm, but this afternoon, the news got worse for some. We're looking at 50 to 60,000 customers without power into well into tomorrow. We had as all available crews on standby waiting for this event to move through. Uh, obviously, it's, it's been even bigger than we expected. Electricity lines failed or other failures in 350 locations across the state. The Premier forced to defend the state's energy supply as he did after September's statewide blackout. They're secure and reliable, but no power system in the world will withstand a gum tree hitting a power line and dragging it to the ground. Now, the efforts to restore power could be stalled by another wave of bad weather. A severe thunderstorm warning has just been issued for parts of the state, including the Flinders Ranges, the Mid-North and through to the Riverland. There's also a chance of showers and thunderstorms in Adelaide and the Mount Lofty Ranges later tonight. Will? Yeah, thanks for the details, Joe Brevy there.